Hey, this is Jody with another weekly video. This week's video is about putting a root pass in a 2 inch Schedule 80 pipe, carbon steel pipe, but using 309 stainless steel filler rod. Now that's pretty common. Might sound funny to some people who aren't involved with pipe welding tests, but it's very common. It's a UA number 41 6G pipe test using 2 inch Schedule 80 and 309 stainless rod using a back purge of argon, and this is for the root pass got to be clean you got to get all that mill scale off of there now you see this little adapter I've got here it's called a flapper adapter I got it on the net because I got this four inch grinder that I wasn't doing anything else with and I wanted to be able to use carbide burrs and whatnot in that without having to hook up an air compressor so I've cleaned inside and out about half to one inch back to clean bright metal and I've got a little trough here that I'm lining things up in this is a strong hand fixture point table and it's got these little magnetic little inserts there that just serve pretty well for lining up round stuff like that in a pinch and I'm gonna go ahead and tape up one end of it using regular old duct tape duct tapes kinda gummy and kinda stretchy and if it gets really hot it just gets in turns into a mess but this is down on the bottom end shouldn't get too hot if I let it cool often enough this is where the argon hose is going to go in so I'm poking a hole with a screwdriver you could do that with a ballpoint pen or anything and I'm using a piece of uh, plastic hose here basically this is an argon cable off of an old long air cooled TIG torch you might you, you if you're going to take this test somewhere you're, you're just going to you're going to have whatever kind of tape they have and you're going to have whatever kind of hose they have but just giving some ideas and some tips here and some concepts this is how I put the hose in the bottom. I ran it all the way through that thing and then I'm going to build it up with tape here to where it kind of tapers up to kind of a, a bigger diameter. I'm going to mash that on there real tight and then pull it back through here kind of like a wedge so that it seats really well, really tight fit and doesn't leak air, suck air anywhere through there. And the bottom is done now. Now I've got to tape the other end. And a lot of people like to use a clear lens it's kind of an optional thing. It does, it does kind of let you keep up with your progress and check your purge and see if things are okay with a flashlight and everything. So I'm just doing that for, for the sake of conversation here. Popping a little purge hole in it. Although I'm later going to cut another little slot in the, in the tape with a knife to make, sure I have, to make sure I have a good purge. And actually, again, this is totally not necessary putting that on there, the uh, clear lens, but it, it's, it, it does help some people. And to get tacks on here, you're going to have to build a little trough like that and tape up all but the area you're going to tack. So I've got it set at about 15 to 20 CFH, and I'm going to completely close it up for a minute or so, and then open it up, check my gap, 1 8 gap, and I'm going to light up on it with about 70 amps here, and get one tack on it. And this is the method I'm going to be using to weld this thing today, is just a dip keyhole technique. I'm going to use that word keyhole a lot, and I'll explain a little bit more about it just a little bit later when it goes on for a little bit longer time. Right now, I'm just getting a single tack on here, and I'm using a foot pedal today. I'm just I'm setting the machine, and I'm going max pedal so that I can so that I can uh, you know relay to you what amps worked for for what gap and all that kind of stuff. Most people that take this test, it's going to be very common that they won't have anything but a scratch start air-cooled rig with no amperage control at all other than on the machine so that's why I'm calling out amperage here the amperage required is going to depend on the gap an eighth inch gap is going to take almost exactly 75 amps but if it's a little bit loose of an eighth it's going to take 70 if it's a little tight it's going to take closer to 80 and as it tightens up on you you may have to bump it up uh, five amps or so you know as you as, as the gap draws shut now the inspectors are all different. They might all they might require you to feather all your tacks. I'm just feathering my top one here, and the reason is because, in fact, it's a good idea to cut. I, I might even cut that one out when I get to the top. But I'm going to cut the side tacks out as I get to them, for the reason the reason being is I'm going to try to really push rod in the bottom to get a little bit of protrusion, a little penetration, a little reinforcement up in there, and uh, when I get to the tack. Uh, it's going to wind up with a low place unless I cut the tack out or feed rod from inside which is something that's it's a whole other skill kind of tough to do and uh, especially if the gap closes up on you a little bit too much so right now I'm taking lots of dry runs making sure that I, that I can prop in a, in a place that's good making sure it's the right height that's another issue usually 
the the inspector will come in and and once it's set it's set height you can't roll it you can't raise it or lower it he might put even put a stamp on some areas or measure something to some kind of indicator so he can tell if you moved it so you gotta you gotta figure a height that is just right high enough so that you can get access to the bottom but low enough so that you can get a good line of sight on the top and not put yourself in a, in a jam make sure the gap is all right with a 1 8 inch rod get a little heads up on what to do like if it's a little tight you're, you're gonna get a plan to where you're gonna bump it up 5 amps or whatever when you get to the top and just think about things this is the time to do it and kinda get a plan in place a few little dry runs like this just making sure that things are, are good you're not get, gonna get hung up and that, that it's, it's the right height will pay dividends alright so the purge is on again it's about 15 CFH but I need to tape the uh, tape the joint up because that's a big gap to uh, to get a good purge with but I also need a vent hole at the very highest point because argon is heavier than air it will displace uh, air like water will filling up a container and so if you don't have a vent at the very highest point you'll never get all the oxygen purged out of something so after giving it a few minutes and making sure I have a purge hole cut at the very highest point it's time to light up and weld so get that end of that tack right there melting and and uh, start adding rod and I'm trying to feed a little bit of rod rods shaking around a little bit on me because I am actually in a bit of a jam with camera being in the way and whatnot but it's pretty pretty normal stuff but I'm trying to feed the rod in toward the inside of the pipe not like all the way up inside there but definitely not way on the outside of the puddle I'm trying to and I'm also pushing a little bit a little bit of rod in each time and I'm keeping it in there fairly often basically uh, satisfying the puddle so uh, you know we talk about the keyhole shape a lot and that keyhole shape you don't ever really want it to get shaped like an old-timey keyhole in a door uh, because that's generally too hot but it'll begin to shape like a keyhole in a door and that's time to get the rod back in there when it does that so I'm stopping prematurely before I get to the tack here I could have gone a little further a good quarter inch further but I just figured it's time to stop for the purposes of just doing this video and and uh, cut the tack out and grind a little bit of the metal out and I'm not gonna grind it all out I'm gonna leave a little bit there that works best for me uh, leaving a little bit of lip hanging over there helps me helps it pull the metal in there for me works for me some guys like to grind it completely out if they're grinding tacks out and just with a knife blade I'm gonna deburr that because I want to take a chance on leaving a burr hanging in there when the weld's all done so we'll light up again here in just a sec and uh, show what that looks like reconsuming that tack again I'm just using enough heat to where I can see I can see the metal just begin to keyhole that feather edge but not a whole lot pushing a little wire in there but when I get up to where the tack was I'm gonna feed a little bit less wire I'm getting up around to the uh, past the the three o'clock or the nine o'clock position here so gravity's not as much of a factor as long as I feed a little bit of rod in there and I don't have pressure building up on the inside it'll pull it in so I'm feeding a little bit less rod here giving a little more time between feeding rods make sure it kind of re melts reconsumes the uh, remnants of that old tack and then it's back to the normal rhythm here just a very slight keyhole with a little bit of just a little bit of rod dipping in there at, at uh, regular intervals So you'll notice I am wearing a TIG finger here. I'll talk about that a little bit more in detail in just a minute. Back to the arc shots here. This is around closer, you know, this is the top side of it here where I'm going just a little bit quicker, a little bit wider. Not trying to push rod toward the inside of the pipe. I'm just trying to get the thing sewed up here. So this is where you can go just a little wider. You can lean the tungsten back a little bit more not worry about pushing through because gravity is going to do that for you now th th again about the TIG finger for a 6G test like this especially 2 inch and below it's kinda hard to walk the cup for me and go at the rate that I want to go like on a root pass like this sometimes I wouldn't want us to go straight forward and back and I don't want to get hung up I don't want the cup to slip off I don't want it to hang up and not move when I want to move so I usually freehand root passes like this in this diameter pipe 
Um, that's just one way of doing it. It's one way that I have found is more repeatable for me than other ways. But if you're doing that, if you don't like to walk the cup or can't walk the cup on a joint like this, the TIG finger is the way to go. It's the best money you will ever have spent. So if you're getting ready to go take a test like this, I highly recommend trying one out. I don't think you can go wrong. You'll be glad you did. Nobody's ever bought one going to take a test from me and, and, and replied back and said, yeah, that thing didn't help at all, ever. I never got an email like that. So, And I have shipped a lot of them to people that, have, that are going out to take 6G tests for nuclear plants and things like that. Most of the time I get, I get good reports back saying it really helped. That's not a sham wow pitch, you know. This is just real deal stuff here. It's a good product, a good price, and I really feel that it will help you. And I know in order to get something uh, in business, you got to give something. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'm giving something here, giving you my best tips on how to pass a test like this. And I hope you can see, you know, how how this thing could help. Nothing worse than than uh, getting almost ready to tie into attack, and things are going your way, things are going just right, everything's going good, and then your finger all of a sudden starts just cooking, and you're about ready to scream, and you can't make the tie in, and you got to snap out, you got an extra tie in that you didn't really want. It just having a TIG finger on just removes one thing from the equation, lets you concentrate on making the weld, and removes that little distraction, that little annoyance of uh, where to prop, and are you going to be able to prop long enough that your fingers or your knuckles aren't going to be cooking. So enough sales talk. We'll get back to the technical stuff here. All right, now we're just, uh, again, we're keyholing just a little bit here. See, watch the, the feather edges of that bevel. They're just, just, when they just begin to keyhole, you get the rod in there and you kind of satisfy the puddle. And it's getting just a little bit, a little bit more of a keyhole than probably should have right here. But this is up toward the, toward the nine o'clock or three o'clock position here. And I'm coming up on that tack and I'm going to do the same thing there that I did on the other side. I cut it loose. I cut the tack in the middle and then I'm wrapping it up here. And that's going to be the end of the joint. I'll show you the finished product here in just about two seconds. All right, from the outside, uh, the one good thing about doing a root like that with that kind of gap in a 332 rod is it puts a little heavier root in there. It's got a good purge and it, with a heavier root it's less likely to suck back so you'll see that on the hot pass which should be coming up really soon. That's the hot pass right there. So listen, go to weldmongerstore.com right now. Order your TIG finger if you're getting ready to take a test like this. I wish you the best of luck especially if you're driving a long way to take that test and we'll see you next week.